Welcome dear brothers and sisters to the studio of the Savage School Department and today we have a new Savage School lesson for you. If you remember we're continuing the topics related to the principles of faith and this time we're going to talk about the Church of the Lord. And we're pleased to have uh, Brother Francis Douglas from uh, the General Conference. He's the treasurer of the General Conference and also division or leader in Asia and it will be wonderful to hear also his comments on our topic. <clears throat> Welcome brother. Yes, will be. Thank you. Before we begin with our Sabbath School lesson we wish to have a silent prayer. As always, we will do a short overview on the Sabbath School lesson. It's a very important uh, lesson and uh, I think everybody can enjoy it. We have uh, the introduction testimony uh, here and then we continue furthermore uh, building in the living rock that is a kind of introduction to the, uh, to the lesson. Then we come to uh, the other undertitle which follow up the first step in organization. We're going to see how the church is considered in the Bible in the different aspects. There is the aspects in the organization, there is the aspect as, as the spiritual uh, body of, uh, of Christ and uh, continue forwards we will seek like a body and this is the comparison which Apostle Paul is using to illustrate uh, the church. Then uh, we are um, uh, continuing engage in a great war and which is that great war we're going also to see here. Then we have another under title which is the special love and um, unity and progress. It's very important uh, to uh, focus on the central point of the lesson and that is very difficult to describe which one you are going to choose. If you consider that your church need a lot of unity and progress then it's obviously the end of the lesson very important. If you consider that there is certain questions related which, the church, which is the church of God and how to prove that that is the church of God then you can use more the, more the, the questions number four and, and five uh, uh, related to, to that and develop uh, that uh, topic uh, more uh, in, in more details <clears throat> but in general the lesson is a very short study about very serious subject and uh, may the Lord help you to be on time and to uh, not to overdo with, uh, with the time and with explanations otherwise you can take a special hour in the afternoon. <clears throat> Let's go now with the details in the Sabbath School lesson and we can enjoy the comments of Pastor Douglas as well. <clears throat> we can begin right from the beginning and commenting on every question. I will try to that we touch the different point of view so that we can make it easier for you in case that you have several questions related to the lesson. The the first question says, who present the plan of establishment of the church and how stable is it? What would you say, a hey, Brother Douglas? Brother, the answer is Jesus. Okay, <laughs> the answer is Jesus, that's yeah, right. Very recently, you know, somebody asked me, well, they're wondering what kind of uh, topic we should mention that he's going to do a talk or a sermon. I said the easiest topic is about Jesus because whoever is going to talk is going to talk about Jesus. That's For right. us, the central point is Jesus. That's right. The central point is Jesus. Very important. However, the Bible text speaks about Peter. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> and it says the Peter is the rock. And upon the Peter will be built the church. And it is interesting that it says the gate of hell shall not prevail. So it means that it's very stable. It's absolutely uh, uh, un, uh, invincible. It's a, a victorious church. <clears throat> Surely some people will say but how that is that, that, that nobody will prevail. If, you, if we have as an example the 
the primitive Christian church and we know that unfortunately it's become corrupted and it was left uh, aside and then a remnant of it continued the line. We understand that the church or the, the term of church it can uh, mean several things. In the background we have the oldest church in the world. It is a church built in Greece and as you can see it's kind of cave and in the cave is uh, it's the church. Uh, the church can mean the building of the church. Church can mean the, the, the believers. A church can be the organization and church can be the leadership and church can be also the doctrinal part of uh, of it, it's uh, very easy to understand that if we study the Bible in Greek language, because in Greek we have different words related to what church is, and uh, also in Hebrew we have several words, but in English and Spanish and uh, the, the modern languages we have one word, and in that one word are compressed the different meaning of, of, uh, of that. Uh, however, we understand that <clears throat> when God speaks about the church that nobody can prevail against it, it speaks about the faithful believers that have the full light of the time. And this is very important to be understood because furthermore we're, we're going to see that it's not just the faithful believers but also God have a faithful organization. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see uh, how that is expressed in the, the in the lesson. It's very important here at uh, this Bible verse. I wish to present that in the screen, and this is here. In quietness and confidence shall you uh, sh shall be your strength, and that's very important to notice. Um, it's not in membership of organization. It's not. A position that we hold in the organization now it is in the personal relationship with Jesus Christ <clears throat> let's go now to the second questions upon what firm foundation is Christian Church built and what confidence is expressed in the Holy Scripture concerning the church being truly built in solid foundation. We have three Bible verses here, Brother Douglas, what would you, what do you think is important on that question? I think, uh, you know, as we are, we are talking about, about the Sabbath school teachers mm -hmm. need to be educated, I feel that, you know, we should discuss about the second uh, uh, Bible text mentioned here and uh, Ephesians mm -hmm. chapter 2. Okay. Here you find and are built upon foundation of the apostles mm -hmm. and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So some people might argue, say here it's mentioned. Mm -hmm. It is the foundation of apostles. That's, That's why right. we have all the saints. Mm -hmm. In the we worship the saints because they are the foundation of the church. Mm -hmm. So something like that. But we have to understand here, Jesus Christ Himself being the chief cornerstone. Amen. Without Jesus, there is nothing. Mm -hmm. So that is very important in this point. And uh, it's the church is built on Jesus. That's right. That's right. It's very important, and you touch a very important question. Uh, why is the church built on the apostles? Yes. It's just built in by, upon the apostles because through the apostles have been established the doctrine of the church. Mm -hmm. And through the apostles we have the Bible text that we know anything about the New Testament today. This is the four Gospels and these are the letters that, uh, <coughs> the, the, that we have and also the historical development of the church. So this is why we have also the organization of the church. We have also the first general conference in the time of the apostles. The primitive church have been absolutely accepted by God. And although God says that they have lost their first love, but they have been the church of God and there was not apostasy to be considered at that time. And this is very important to understand. That's why they have been the foundation. Mm -hmm. But not only they're the foundation, we know the text in Revelations that says that if we're faithful until the end, we will sit in the throne 
as Jesus overcome and he sat on the throne of his yes. father. And we will be pillars, it says, in the temple. Yes. And we will be stones in the building of the temple. So it will be actually also part of that foundation yes. if we are faithful and follow the same doctrine of the apostles. Okay. Right? Yes. And that's why it says that Jesus Christ is the cornerstone because Jesus Christ is the real founder. Through Jesus Christ we have the forgiveness, the salvation, He's Alpha and Omega. And later on we're going to see another illustration of the Church of God and then we will see how that works yes. really in, uh, in reality with the Church and the connection with Christ. And here's this little explanation about Peter because we couldn't explain that in question number one, one. Yes. <laughs> because there was not this testimony there. Yeah. And I will show that in the screen so everybody can see here is it. It says, Peter was not the rock upon which the church was founded. The gates of hell did prevail against him when he denied his Lord with uh, <clears throat> a cursing and swearing. The church was built upon one again who the gates of hell could not prevail. Well, and uh, how do we explain this apparent uh, contradiction? It's uh, because uh, it is built upon the faith that Jesus, that, that Peter had. And, and what Peter was always asked, or sometimes asked, <clears throat> what do you believe? Who, who am I? As, as Jesus. Then he says, you are the Son of God, uh, the Messiah that have to come. So upon that faith is the church built. That's why the name of Peter was uh, mixed up in that. Uh, uh, and in the context and the testimony, it's uh, surely uh, very clear. Uh, explain how, that, uh, uh, how the things work. <clears throat> Let's go now to question number three and see what was the first step Jesus, Jesus took uh, in laying the foundation of his church and what purpose did it have in its organization. Now, we're coming now from faithful believers that are spread and the, the things that unite them is the doctrine, is the spirit, is the faith. And we're turning into an organization, and we're going to see how God organized His church and why did He organize His church. So what would you say, what was the first step Jesus took in laying the foundation of His church? <clears throat> and what was the purpose of His organization? Uh, actually, the purpose of organization is mentioned here, to represent Him on mm -hmm. earth. The Very church good. is there to represent Jesus on earth. Mm -hmm. But the first step he initiated was this selecting the disciples to okay. be the pillars to build the church on. Very good, very good, very so, important. That's right, yes. that's right. <clears throat> we can, if we, if we put it more chronologically, mm -hmm. the whole thing, okay. uh, if we follow Mark <laughs> chapter yes, 3, sure. yes. first he went to the mountain to pray, right? Yes. So he expected a revelation to pick up the people. So that is very important, I think, because I think that's a similar way how we become members in the church. It's not because we are convinced by logic, no, coincidence, not, or coincidence, no. or because we are attracted with such certain activities or whatever. Emotion feelings, no. No emotion <laughs> feelings, or because we like the buildings, or yes. the music, or the choir. Or because somebody want to marry or somebody don't want to <laughs> marry attractions, <laughs> attractions right? Yes. It is because God revealed to Jesus who are the members, who yes. are the, the apostles. And I mean, the, this is very, uh, very interesting sign that, that, that we found here. <clears throat> then uh, it says that he ordained the twelve. Yes. What do you think the ordination is? And what did the ordination means? Well, the ordination means that, you know, he entrusted the duty to them. Amen. Or he entrusted them. And, and that ordination remained, and they always, they always, it remained in their heart 
Oh, Jesus chose us and we have an obligation, we have a duty to perform. That's right. That's that right. always remains in us when we when we are baptized, we are all ordained, mm. every one of us. That's because right. Because ordination means it is entrusted mm. to us. And it's interesting that when the apostles were ordained, they were not ordained because they they are supposed to rule upon the church, no. so they should, should be like a boss and, and leaders and, and so the people serve to them. They were ordained to serve and they were sent, it says, sent them forth to preach. The ordination given by God, it's a very important uh, thing, it's a, as you say, it's a, a sign of divine representation. But it's not given so that we boxed with our ordination. It's given because we have to serve through this ordination and preach and share the gospel yes, to others. Yes, actually speaking, the disciples didn't understand that. That is very right. And yes. that was the problem they had That's when Christ right. was there. Mm -hmm. And who is senior? Who is superior? Who should serve who? That's and right. this is very obvious at the time of upper room when that's they had right. gathered for the last supper. Amen. That's very true. It's very yeah. true. And, and that's himself. <clears throat> Amen. And right. that's why they needed to go through the washing of the feet, yes. <laughs> which is the the purification and reminding the actually of the process and the true dedication mm -hmm. in the church. And actually, we can today we can be influenced also of the the worldly leadership uh, and, and manner or examples because there the leadership is different there the leader is really a leader he decides everything he takes everything in his hand but the biblical leadership is a very interesting thing it's a kind of more Asian pattern leadership it says the if you want to be first you but you must be the last uh, or the first will be the last the last will be first we see this uh, meekness, this uh, humbleness in the ordained people because they are supposed to reflect Christ and Christ was, Christ was that person. He left heaven and come to serve the people. He served until even give his life for us. Yes. And the, he did this is very nice here in the testimony. It says the second testimony. <clears throat> Jesus had called his disciples that he may send them forth as his witnesses to declare to the world what they have seen and heard of him. Their office was the most important to watch human beings have ever been called and was second only to that of Christ himself. Wow, such an incredible privilege yes. given to the humans. Yeah? And in not only preaching, but they need to also give example of <clears throat> the master yes. who sent them, right? They need to leave the message. Correct. Thank you. Well, it's a lot to, to be said in this, uh, uh, this important uh, topics. But let's move forwards and see the question four. Uh, <clears throat> With what illustration did the apostle show the diversity and unity of God's church? Now that's very important. And then we have the second questions related more to the testimonies. It says, what attitude does every member need to have so that the church as a body may grow and work in harmony for advancement uh, of the heavenly, heavenly kingdom? Sometimes people say giving, you know, doing missionary work is to, to take the loudspeaker and blow away as loud as possible and say convert and come to Christ and that's it. But we're going to see here that it's not that, that not, not simple now. Because we need to, as a church, we need to give an example. We need to represent the whole church as a body. And everyone as a member have an important part of it because it's not just calling people come to the church, but when they come to the church, what are they going to see? And depend on that, what are they going to see is what their decision will be. But what we understand based on the, on the Bible verses, Brother Douglas? Um, 
I like to emphasize something on the question itself. Here it says, you know, with what illustration did the apostles show the diversity and unity of God's church? It is like, you know, the unity, the, the, it is the diversity and it's talking about the unity. It is something, something similar like, like the division of labor you talk about. Division of labor. For example, brother, that you know, to make a nail, a nail or a screw, screw or a pin, the process need more than 20 people, they say. Hmm. Each person does different things. And like that, you need, and ultimately, you end up having one nail. It is like that. To have one soul, all can contribute. And it is a diverse, uh, you know, a kind of a, a united effort. And somebody can go and talk, somebody can pray. There are a lot of people praying. Mm -hmm. And they are also part of this team. And which they cannot go and do things. But there are people who can go and they go. And there are people who welcome the people to the church and they talk and be friendly with them. That is also part of the team. Amen. Like that, it is mm -hmm. different. So here it is mentioned in one by one, we should, and we have to keep in mind, it, the, the, the key words is two C's, they say, you should complement to each other as a teamwork, not conflict with each other. These very two important. C's are very important. Amen, amen. It Thank has you. to be compli complimented mm -hmm. and not conflicted. Thank you very much for a very nice comments. <clears throat> the the first Corinthian chapter twelve twelve say it's uh, very easy to remember that Bible verse mm -hmm. and, and we should remember that it says for us the body is one and had many members and all the members are in one body, being many are one body, so also is Christ. <clears throat> so sometimes people say I'm bringing people to Christ not to the church but according to that Bible verse that's impossible no. they cannot bring people to Christ that have no body have no church have not organization and it cannot be bring to, brought to a church if that church does not have Christ they're not into Christ so it is very important to understand that it's not just bringing people to the doctrine of Christ, but we need to bring the people into the church that belongs to Christ and that have us a head Christ and, in the, the, and the head means he is the leader, he's the foundation, he's everything and we're just, just operating because of his inspiration. But the unity is a kind of a, such important message, such important um, uh, part of the gospel. It's not just telling people be converted. No, we need to give an example of uh, that conversion. If we're converted, we will be one. If we have the same spirit, we will be one. And if we are not one because we have not the same spirit, we have a problem with the conversion. And that is very important. The, the last testimony says here, the third in the, in the in order. This tabernacle of Christ's body and from north, south, east and west, he gathered those who shall help to compose it. Very important. God gathers everybody from everywhere. From India, from Sri Lanka. From east and from, from west. And from the west. <laughs> That's right. From east and from the west. We're a good example for that today. Yeah. yeah. And what happened? He bring them together because he, he, he searched for these people that are going to help and compose that body and they will be active to, you know, to spread the message and to fulfill the mission of the, of the church or the body of Christ. It, that reminds me, brother, my father yeah. used to tell. Um, it is it is that you know we if when when Abraham was going and mm -hmm. all these uh, all these forefathers they always built altars that's right altars so they have to have symmetrical nice stones <coughs> to build this altar mm -hmm. so he always said that you are a stone I am a stone mm -hmm. we are part of that altar amen wonderful then the sacrifice yes. can be made and we cannot say that no I don't want to be part of it and I want to be out I cannot bear the uh, weight no 
then when we are together, then it forms one altar. That's right, that's right. Thank you. Very nice symbol. Very nice, very nice. Actually, the unity and the friendly approach to people in the church sometimes is doing a stronger impact to mm -hmm. people than uh, the theory of the message itself. Yes. I remember being in one conference in South America, I think it was in Colombia, and one young man came and uh, when we had on Sabbath testimonies and he shows up in the front and says, I'm not from this church, I don't know your doctrine, but you guys are so friendly, you're so nice to me, that I began thinking already to become your member. <laughs> <laughs> so without knowing the, the, the truth, he don't know what we believe, he don't know what we teach, but only because of the friendly approach, he already was attracted to become a member. So that is very, uh, I think that's very important to be understood. Brother, the gospel is that. You know, the gospel is good news, brother. That's right. That's right. You know, that's why Jesus found the gospel mm -hmm. In different places, he applied the gospel in different ways. Those who that's are hungry, right. the gospel for them is food. That's so he right. gave them food. That's right. That's, <laughs> right. that's right. If people are hungry, God and Jesus gave them food, so everybody's happy. I think if we really give to people what they need for their life, for their realization, and more than everything, they need love, fellowship, and friend friendship. Yes. Yeah, sure, people will never reject. And, and of course, we have such a wonderful truth that is yes. very difficult to and, be and rejected. It, and, and mostly, brother, I heard uh, many people, there's no one to listen to people. Uh -huh. There are people who want to talk, mm -hmm. and there is, they don't have anyone to listen to their stories, their grievances. Mm -hmm. If you are a good listener, you can win them. That's right, that's right. But maybe that happened because there are so many people sitting in the chairs of the church and they don't go to do missionary work. No. And when they see one new person coming into the church, then they want to preach to him. <laughs> Better everybody goes into the street and find somebody. Yes. Then they can. They have a lot of opportunity to talk. And in the church, just keep silent and listen to the people. As you mentioned, that will be much more attractive. Yeah, yes. sure. <clears throat> Question number six. Let's see what else the church have and should have to demonstrate that wonderful body of Christ and that truth. Because we're not just a building. You know, if you see that building, it doesn't have such who knows what kind of attractive appearance. This is the first church. It's just a place where people gather together and worship. And you can see there is no cross uh, on that uh, the way as uh, modern churches have <clears throat> but uh, uh, what we need to understand the building is not really the church what's really the lesson is talking about it's about the spiritual reflection of Christ in the church that is really what the church is and let's see now how strong is Jesus love for his church and the second questions therefore how deeply do its member love the church <laughs> that is very question very important also. okay yes please uh, question five we see the terrible enmity excuse me yes we must we, we, we pass the, we pass the and question yeah, actually five. these two questions complement each other that's right and as we saw in the question number six as mm -hmm. you mentioned how strong is Jesus's love for his church why he's having this strong love for the church because the terrible enmity and war is going to take place against the church that's why he's having this love Mm -hmm. So I think it is very important, we had to notice that, you know, the Revelation chapter 12 verse 17 we find, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Brother, that is very strong statement I would say. And that is why Jesus is closely monitoring his church and he loves his people. He sacrificed his whole self mm. to the people because of this. Amen. Thank you. Actually, the, uh, the so important organization in the body of Christ on earth 
because it is a war going on and we mm. are part of that war. Yes. We are kind of uh, uh, ambassadors of the heavenly kingdom, but at the same time, we are very much combated, we are very mm -hmm. much attacked by the enemy, and we need to prove for the spiritually weapons that uh, this is the church of God, and that Christ is really the Messiah, and that uh, this is the truth. And how do we prove? By living the truth, by uh, obtaining victory every single day upon the sin, upon temptation, uh, upon the fear to death, and everything else that comes in, in our way. <clears throat> It's uh, very important to question number five that you mentioned us. Uh, in vision, I saw two armies in terrible conflict. I want to show that here in the screen. And that is so strong, this testimony, testimony for the church, uh, <clears throat> volume eight. And it says, one army was led by the banner bearing the words in <clears throat> insignia, the other was led by the blood-stained banner of Prince Emmanuel. Standard after standard were left to trial in the dust as company after company from the Lord's army joined the foe and terrible after tribe and tribe after tribe from the ranks of the enemy united with the commandment keeping people of God. I think that is an incredible vision and uh, I hope we all can vision, yes. vision somehow this picture and never forget it because that's how we can understand what the Church of God is. I know brother. I, I find it very interesting here. See, the, the second part of the question is yeah. in question number five that's is right. therefore what is required of every member? Very important. Okay. Very important for me. And <laughs> here in the in the in the note we find okay. come out come out from among them. That is the fourth line mm -hmm. from the bottom. We find that in that uh, note with the testimony it says, Come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean and I will receive you and will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters. How wonderful promise this is. Amen. But it is conditional. You have to come out and be not touch unclean things. That's right. That's that, right. That is the key. And it's interesting that there are only two armies. There is not a middle no. one that, 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 no. that, that is kind of neutral. No. There is no such, you know, it, it, you, if you're not in the army of God, then you're in the army of the enemy. And that, right. is, that is so so clear in that vision and may the Lord give us that clear understanding also that there is yeah. no neutral position yeah. we have to be in the army of the Lord yeah. the commandment keeping army and that is very important yeah. yes it should be yes or no there's nothing called maybe that's right that's <laughs> right that's right that is right <clears throat> Well, now we can go to question six, and partially we uh, covered. We, we covered uh, that before, but still it's very important to see how strong is Jesus' love to his church and how strong is our love to the church. And, and I think that's how we can measure also how closer we are to Christ and how, how Christ or how close Christ is to us. It's a very important question. What do you think about based on the Ephesians and John and, and the other Ephesians Bible verse, what, what, is, okay. what do you think? Uh, I should say, brother, that, you know, how strong Jesus' love for his church. It's very clear in Ephesians, that mm -hmm. the Bible text, and he gave himself. Sure. That's right. He That's gave sure. himself. So that is very clear. And he gave himself, and that is important. And again, your question, the second part, therefore how deeply do its members love the church? How deeply we should love the church? Also we have to find, that is mentioned in the testimonies we can see and uh, here we can find that in the testimonies. Uh, the, f the first, uh, no, the second, uh, second portion of the testimonies we find that and uh, it says that uh, 
the, the Lord has a people, a chosen people in heavenly places, page 284. We find that and we find that here. Lord has a people, a chosen people, his church to be his own, his own fortress mm -hmm. which he holds in a sin strike and revolted world. Mm -hmm. He has a people. That is very important. That are we in that a people, in that group. That is very important for us to understand. And uh, here in the Bible text also we find that uh, in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15 but but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Christ all things not one or two here and there everything thank and you so this much this is the people that's that right. he's talking about that's right that's right it's so important and uh, in John chapter 15 Verse 12 and 13 says that Christ so loved us, his friends, that he was giving, he gave his life for his friends. Yes. And uh, greater love had no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. So it is supposedly to understand that we are supposed to give our lives to our friends as well, to the church, to the not the church as the building, not the church as uh, something else, but the church of truth, the church uh, built of the remnant of God. And I think the reform movement have understood that very well all over the years. That's why we have so many martyrs mm -hmm. that have decided to give their lives yes. for the truth, for Christ, for the church. And we have such powerful testimony which is exactly for fullness of uh, the verses in John 15. Mm -hmm. If we understand that this way, I think uh, a lot of quarrel and misunderstanding can be avoided. <laughs> if we remember more and more often that Bible verse, I think that will be uh, really wonderful. <clears throat> but let's go now to the last question, seven, and see something more about uh, the example we need to give to that world considering the current world condition and prayer of the savior what relationship is crucially necessary among the church members for the accomplishment of his plan okay. how can we preach the gospel with power and which is the biggest argument and proof that christ have really come that is the point Yes, brother. It is, uh, I should say that, you know, and, uh, you know, if you just recall, I mean, see this, uh, the topic or the subtitle here, unity and progress, it says. Mm -hmm. Unity and progress. It's very important for us to be uh, united. That provides progress. Mm -hmm. So that is the key here. And, and until the disciples were united, and they had the oneness in thought, word and deed. They could not receive the first rain, early rain. The early rain, that's right. So this is the key for us also. In order to accomplish this work, we need the latter rain. We need the latter rain. And that is what we are waiting for. That is what we are eagerly, eagerly want to have it for. And for that, the condition is that we have to have oneness among us. We should have one goal one you know thinking and everything should be united with us amen holding amen. each other upholding each other and upholding christ in our lives so That's that is right. more important for us and considering current world condition it is more important for us brother. that's right that's right and uh, the bible verses are so clear especially Very john clear. 17. yes uh, <clears throat> it says uh, um, but for them also which shall believe in the truth of the wall, <clears throat> that they all be one, one, as you, Father, are in me and I in thee, that they also may be one as us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. Mm -hmm. It's not just a testimony about us, 
that we are Christians, that we are good people, that we are part of the Church of God. No. Yeah, no. It's much more than that. It's the, it's the proof that Christ was sent by God. That this really is the Christianity, is really divine uh, uh, religion. That's incredible. Today, there's so much fight among religions now. It's a, such a hatred against Islam. And uh, maybe a lot of hate in the other direction. And, and among Christians and among Islams, killing and uh, persecution and so on. Uh, <clears throat> and in that, in that time, such a powerful testimony will be this love and unity among the people of God. This will be the, the incredible sign. And we can see here also in the testimony. Let me show you the in the screen. It says, <clears throat> Only as they were united with Christ could the disciples hope to have the accomplishment the accompanying power. power of the Holy Spirit. That's what, what you just mentioned. Yes. Only if they were united with Christ. And then cooperation of the angels of heaven. Uh, so without unity, actually, uh, we are disconnected with Christ. We're disconnected from the power of the Spirit. Everything. We're disconnected from the angels of heaven. So we're actually doing something by ourselves. It's okay. kind of private now, business. We have to understand, this is the goal of Satan. Mm -hmm. So that is why he is bringing enmity among us. That's right. So that he can achieve his goal. Mm -hmm. So we cannot reach our progress. We cannot have his spirit. As you mentioned earlier, it has to be two armies. If we are not with Christ, he wanted Satan wanted us to be with him. So this is the key here once again. If we are having unity mm -hmm. and we all united together as one banner in one army, mm -hmm. then he cannot fight. He knows that. That's right. And that's why he just brings all kinds of you know, diversions or mm -hmm. divisions among us. That's right. Thank you very much. That's very important thought because yeah. it, <clears throat> the army of Christ or the or the Church of God is not just the building, not just the organization, but this is the that group of people that are the faithful ones. Yes. And now, if we are not united, that means that we are separated of the faithful ones. Yes. And we are separated by Christ from the, from Christ. Yes. That means that although we externally maybe belong to the organization. We can in the same way be on the side of the enemy as you mentioned and that is terrible to think about and so scary to think about that we can maybe imagine that we are part of that holy body of Christ and at the same time we can work against it. This is so terrible. Yeah brother, I think we should pray. I think the viewers should know that we should pray daily for this unity. Amen. Daily that, you know, I should be part of this. Amen. I should be part of this group. I That's should be right. part of Christ. That's I right. should be part of His body. We should, we should specially take time to pray for this. That's right. That's right, brother. And the Laodicea message is also strongly warning us about. Yes. Because that is the sickness of the last church. Exactly. The proudness, the self righteousness and where self-righteousness is self that's always confidence quarrel. we have everything yes and then it, 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 i am right and everybody else is wrong <laughs> that's the most terrible yeah. spirit we can ever have well thank you very much brother for your comments uh, it's once this is uh, such a wonderful lesson and i'm sure we can discuss a lot more it's yes. every single yes. point is so important but uh, dear brothers and sisters being good carriage if we are with christ if we do our worship our prayers if we have his spirit we have nothing to fear we will be united with each other because the unity is not a physical unity it's a unity in the spirit mm -hmm. and this unity is so wonderful we can feel the love to each other just and look just in the presence of our brethren, we, we feel encouraged, we feel uh, uh, um, rejoicing.
and uh, may God uh, give to all of us this wonderful experience of friendship, of true friendship, of true love, true connection with Christ, and to be a part of this wonderful body of Christ, the Church of Christ, that is militant and uh, it's not yet perfect, but uh, standing and the principles and commandment keeping army. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, don't forget to share this uh, lesson with others. We have more and more phone calls from different places around the world that are watching this program and some of them desire already to be part of the church just because they watch the program. So that uh, turns to be a very uh, good missionary tool, not only an educational tool for us. So feel free to share these videos with everybody you you know and that could be interested in these topics and thank you thank you very much again Spur Douglas <clears throat> we hope again you can be with us soon yes and uh, next week we can see you again dear brothers and sisters Amen Amen Thank you.